sometimes longer than 16 months with nothing more than five minutes of phone call privileges a day, if you're lucky, to hear your kids grow up while you're 5,000 miles away trading lead because you thought, as I did, you were fighting for something bigger only to have it handed right back over to the same people you've been fighting for the last 20 years. Now, I, I know, I know, she laughs whenever she's nervous, but this is a completely different level of respect. And speaking of which, do any of you guys think that it's disrespectful to not show up after being invited? And this is an event where you were invited by the families that lost their loved ones in service of this country. Is that not disrespectful? Although some people say that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are just pissed because they were exposed by Trump, which shows the American people where their heads are at. President Joe Biden is sleeping at the beach while Kamala Harris is campaigning on the idea of joy. Although the White House is coming to their defense and saying that both Biden and Harris were not invited by the Gold Star families, reiterating that Donald Trump having videos and photos taken at Section 60 was completely disrespectful to the brave men and women that have sacrificed their lives for the country. However, the truth is a little bit different here, guys. And this is where you have to just see for yourselves how low mainstream media is willing to go to discredit President Donald Trump. So here's what the Gold Star families actually had to say about Donald Trump's visit. We invited President Trump. We are the ones that asked for the video and the pictures to be taken. President Trump has been there for us from the very beginning when our son and the other 12 of his brothers and sisters in arms were murdered due to your negligence an uncaring attitude towards our military. Why did we want Trump there? It wasn't to help his political campaign. We wanted a leader. That explains why you and Joe didn't get a call. Vice President Harris, I ask you, why won't you return a call and explain to us how you call my daughter-in-law's death a success? Vice President Harris, why will you not express your condolences yourself? Why have we never heard from you? And finally, why would you take a day where we celebrated the death of our loved one and use it to disparage not only them, but us? Well, that's the truth, folks. Harris and Biden wants us to believe that Donald Trump is making this a political event. It's not. It's the president and the vice president that's doing that. Remember that these families, they haven't heard from either Biden or Harris since their loved ones died in Afghanistan. And there are many, many more videos of these families defending Donald Trump because they wanted him there. The White House released a statement regarding this day, but it's obvious that President Joe Biden was oblivious to this stuff happening. White House National Security Council Communications Advisor John Kirby, he was asked if this paper statement was enough for the anniversary, to which he responded that no paper statement or appearance at Arlington will ever be enough to repay the families of those who lost loved ones, which in a way is kind of saying that Biden and Harris providing a statement is as good as them showing up. Kirby was also forced to admit that Donald Trump was indeed invited by multiple families to lay a wreath in honor of their 13 service members killed at Abbey Gate. Which begs the question, who really cares about our military? Clearly it's not Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Is it the people who ignore calls and have aides that make statements while they're on vacation? Or is it the people who actually give time to our country's heroes, like Donald Trump? Because the Gold Star families all agree that Donald Trump is the one that cares. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that judgment for you guys who are watching this video right now. Mr. President, what do you think of uh, President Trump's behavior at Arlington Cemetery with the uh the visit to the, uh, to the fallen soldiers? I don't want to answer things. I'm actually what I think. Did you watch your vice president's interview on CNN? Well, I think it's totally uh, inappropriate that uh, Donald Trump has used that part of Arlington Cemetery that way for a partisan political purpose. But, but it's deeper than that. First of all, we know that in private, he doesn't respect service. He doesn't respect sacrifice. He's never done it for anybody. And, uh, and so this was a, a stunt, and it's particularly distasteful for those of us who've lost friends in these conflicts to see this kind of manipulation on uh, Arlington National Cemetery. 
it's obvious they're not happy with what President Trump is doing. So President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have both condemned Donald Trump for being at the third death anniversary of 13 American service members who died in Afghanistan. This was in Arlington National Cemetery and mainstream media is tearing Trump a new one for having photos and videos taken there. And guys, before we get started, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and sharing this video. Let's get going. And I wanna show you what Kamala Harris posted on X after this happened. It's a little bit long, but I'm just gonna go ahead and focus on the important parts. She says that she's had the privilege of visiting Arlington National Cemetery multiple times, noting that it's a place where Americans come together to honor our nation's heroes. She insists that it's not a place for politics. And here's something that really caught my eye because she seems to lack some self-awareness. So it reads, if there's one thing on which we as Americans can all agree, it is that our veterans, military families, and service members should be honored never disparaged and treated with nothing less than our highest respect and gratitude. It's a great message, right? Right up until you realize that this happened right after those deaths were reported. Look, if you remember her laughing when addressing reporters on this too, I'm the, the, if the U.S. military had incurred casualties and you knew about it, you should not be laughing. And her statement today wasn't any better. I mean, it was crazy. As I have said, President Biden made the courageous decision to end America's longest war. No. What, what part about that is create courageous? Hey, don't even get me started on your VP guy, Tim Waltz. Either. He lied about being Afghanistan. He lied about his rank. He dipped out of a deployment, lied about carrying weapons of war at war, lied about a DU DUI, lied about being a head coach, lied about IVF, and is somehow going to lecture us on honor. Hard pass from both of you guys. These people have no clue, no idea of the sacrifice, that feeling of being pinned down by gunfire, not knowing if you're ever going to hug your wife, kids, or parents again. That's a, that's a really bad feeling. You think Kamala Harris, God forbid, she becomes president? You think she understands the gravity of a decision to send our nation's best on like multiple deployments to engage in a conflict like that? Sometimes longer than 16 months with nothing more than five minutes of phone call privileges a day, if you're lucky, to hear your kids grow up while you're 5,000 miles away trading lead because you thought, as I did, you were fighting for something bigger only to have it handed right back over to the same people you've been fighting for the last 20 years. Guys, I never saw this on my 2024 bingo card, but the Swifties are waking up. The Swifties. I never thought I'd see the day that Swifties were rallying for Trump. I guess something with ISIS happened. There's a lot of terrorism going on. I guess she had to shut down some shows because of it. and. A lot of them are just saying, you know, if Trump was in office, this would have never, ever happened. She would be safe. There wouldn't be terrorism or wars going on because we had world peace before and he'll do it again. So they're finally realizing it's not about race or gender or anything of that sort. It's about our safety and the policies and a secure border. And they're finally waking up and it's wild to see like i'm so proud but of course they would just paint this all as some one-off situation arguing that support for trump among swift fans doesn't exist but that isn't the case though because the shirt that's seen in the ai generated images was taken from one that was actually made by a fan so her name is Jenna and her last name starts with a P and I can't pronounce it, but she's a Trump supporter. So the idea from fans like her is that the world was a much safer place with Donald Trump as the president of our country, which would mean safer access to concerts. And it would have also led to Swift not ending her European tour way too short. However, President Joe Biden doesn't agree with this idea. He legitimately seemed pissed off about the notion that the world was safer under former President Donald Trump, at least compared to his term. Many of you are very successful people who travel the world. Name me a country in the world that doesn't think we're the leading nation in the world. Without America, not a joke, think about it. I'm being literal. Who could lead the world other than the United States of America? 
Well, guess what? America's winning, and the world's better off for it. America's more prosperous, and Americans are safer today than we're under Donald Trump. Trump continues to lie about crime in America, like everything else. Guess what? On his watch, the murder rate went up 30 percent, the biggest increase in history. Meanwhile, we made the largest investment, common lie, in public safety ever. Now, the murder rate is falling faster than any time in history. Violent crime has dropped to the lowest level of more than 50 years. And crime will keep coming down. This concept, though, isn't as common to many Americans. Many people truly believe that the Biden-Harris administration took us back a couple of years, and the fear within some communities just can't be ignored. It's this concern that led to the entire movement that some Swifties now support Donald Trump. Hey, my name is Jenna, um, and this picture of me in this Swifties for Trump shirt has been going viral on X and started kind of a movement in the Republican Party. I actually met Trump in this shirt in Racine on June 18th, and he said, quote, she is great. I think this movement is super awesome, but also super important because it's no secret that millions of young female voters consider themselves Swifties. And we don't want them to have to choose between loving Taylor Swift and su supporting their conservative ideologies of the ballot box in November. So I say we stop the hate towards Taylor and her fan base, and let's let Swifties be for Trump fearlessly. Well, there you have it, folks. Mainstream media is going to paint this as a hoax, but you heard what this young lady said. You could be a fan of Taylor Swift and support Donald Trump at the same time. It would be unfair for these people if they couldn't vote for who they wanted to vote for because their idol told them not to. That shouldn't be the case here. Although we have yet to hear any response from Taylor Swift regarding this issue. In fact, she hasn't even talked about politics in a while. I think she's staying in her lane. And guys, before we get started, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for liking the video, sharing this video, and for subscribing to the channel. Let's get started. TMZ, they always have an inside scoop. They dropped it. They said it is confirmed. Beyonce performing at the DNC's final night, three exclamation points, and the internet got hyped. The article read Beyonce's in Chicago and getting ready to pop out for Kamala Harris in the final night of the Democratic National Convention. Multiple sources in the know tell us, Queen B will be the surpri the big surprise performer as VP Harris officially accepts the Democratic Party's nomination to run for president. And then they they were correct. They wrote, as you'd expect, Beyonce's appearance is a huge deal, not only for Harris and the party, but in Chicago as well. We're told Chicago PD is on high alert as it's involved in security for Beyonce at the United Center Arena, as it should be. The queen is here and she's gonna get all the black votes for the Democratic Party, that's what they need. And so it was official, and, and some people were even celebrating because they told you so. Like Don Lemon, he was giddy, take a listen. Beyonce is confirmed admit, performing wrong. at the DNC. He Didn't I tell y'all? <laughs> he's such a weird person. I like love and hate him at the exact same time. I can't explain it, he's just so Don Lemon, you know? You just, you gotta, you gotta appreciate it. Didn't I tell y'all? So people were like, yes, it's amazing, it's happening. And then what happened next was that it didn't happen at all. <laughs> it didn't even kind of happen. Let's quickly talk about these polls here, guys. I mean, look at this, guys. Uh, we can see August 14th, Kamala Harris was beating Donald Trump 56.7% to Donald Trump's 42.7%. Now, this was this Holly, uh, this was the uh, honeymoon period we were talking about for Kamala Harris that I told you guys this was not going to last. Mark my words um that this would not last and sure enough here we are august 29th this is today guys this is real time this is breaking news august 29th look at this donald trump sitting at 52.4 percent with kamala harris sitting at 47.3 percent right so basically after meg the stallion all the you know the the all the uh, hoopla and hype surrounding the atlanta rally in georgia with Kamala Harris, Meg Thee Stallion, Quavo, the Migos, um, after the DNC, all of this hype has exhausted. And we can look at the graph here. You can see on your screen how Kamala Harris, her polling numbers have effectively tanked here today. And Donald Trump's poll position is climbing. Okay. And I want you guys to look at this. Look at how these how these uh, how the poll history has intersected. You can see 
at the point where essentially Kamala Harris was announced, she was basically placed as being the uh, Democratic nominee because basically the coup that took place in the White House booted former President Joe Biden. Well, I say former president. I know he's already going. <laughs> I know he's already on the way out the door. So I'm already, I guess I'm kind of like, I got my hand on President Joe Biden's back right now because I'm already ushering him out the door by calling him the former president. Former President Joe Biden, he's on his way out the door. Uh, but you can see here the electoral college probability sitting here. Kamala Harris is sitting at a mere 47.3%. Donald Trump at a staggering 52.4%. This is outside the realm of... Uh, statistical errors based on historical probabilities. In other words, given how much of a gap there is between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris right now, it really looks like Donald Trump could very well take it at this particular point in time. Okay. So uh, essentially this forecast indicates that Donald Trump has a very strong chance of winning. And let's not forget about the fact that Kamala Harris has had her cover blown yet again. So a source at McDonald's corporate confirmed that they have no record of a Kamala Harris ever working for them around the time and place that Kamala claims. Quote, I did fries. Kamala Harris claims she worked at McDonald's, but she never mentioned it until she ran for president. So this is again a another example of Kamala Harris trying to be anything and everything to everyone okay kamala harris swears she's black when she needs to be black kamala swears she's indian when she needs to be indian kamala swears she's you know black white asian it's like you know the old school michael jackson song right and yet again her cover has been blown so i mean so did kamala harris work for mcdonald's or is she just trying to relate to minimum wage earning individuals the lower income the lower middle class america what is she doing here or is she just blatantly lying but speaking of which i got another video that you guys have to check out where i cover the possibility of kamala harris running away from her debate with donald trump now what's really interesting is that she was talking a whole lot of smack up until the former president agreed on doing a debate and now well her team is straight up scrambling just trying to get this thing canceled and as always guys appreciate you guys being here i'll catch you guys on the next one. Oh, and by the way thank you so much for hitting the like button thank you for subscribing to the channel and sharing this video i'll see you on the next one